Okay, Jerem Jordan in Provo, Spencer Linton in Santa Clara, California. We now welcome into Studio B. Uh, Tom Holman, the athletic director of BYU. What's up, Tom? How you doing, man? Uh, it's a busy week. Yeah, busy. It's been a <laughs> co busy couple of weeks, but I'm super excited and stoked for this game tonight. Okay, a lot to talk about with football, soccer, and volleyball. Let's start with football. So, I think BYU fans, the reaction was uh, strong and loud yesterday in terms of what they were kind of hoping for. New Year's Six, some of those dominoes didn't fall Saturday, but um, Independence Bowl with UAB. I guess, what's your reaction and kind of walk me through the process of what bowl BYU got into? We were scheduled to play in the Independence Bowl if we weren't in a New Year's Six Bowl. The thing that happened is when we first started years ago as an independent, ESPN was able to slot us in a number of bowls and you could see for seven years we had, I can't remember all of them, but one after another and it was a different one every year. We played in the uh, Poinsettia twice and et cetera. But w when we got through that, most of those bowls had been affiliated with teams at that time, with conferences, excuse me, at that time. So by the time we got to that contract, end of the contract and extended it, there were really no bowls that were just left open. They were all associated with conferences. And they even added one this year just to accommodate. Teams, just to right? accommodate. Yeah. So I, mean, I talked to ESPN this year, and, and in the event that something were to happen and we were highly ranked but not in, and they said they're all slotted, that's how it will be. Mm. So we knew kind of that's how it was going to be. Came down to New Year's Six selection, and we missed it by... A half a yard. For, literally, <laughs> like a foot, right, on the pylon camp? So, it, yeah, and it felt like BYU was the first team out. So, and, and I'm not sure, Tom, even with one loss, if it would be any different. I'm, I'm not exactly sure. I, I think, um, you know, the committee really valued what some teams did late and really valued Michigan State's win over Michigan. In yeah, game. and, you know, I also think that college football is, has, has been and is and probably always will be about conferences. When we went independent, we took a giant step. It was a huge risk. And there were a lot of downs and ups. But we took that step to get us into a conference, into a big conference, so that we don't have to deal with this stuff in the future. Yeah. And unfortunately, we have to deal with it this year. And we have one more year of independence. But the way that Kalani and I have looked at it, and we've been together for now a number of years, this last year and this year combined, have done wonders for the future of our program. So as we move forward into the future, starting right now, the future is now, we have a chance to be have twin 11 games. And with that Big 12 on the horizon, just now, almost one year away, after 22, we're in. There's a lot to look forward to. Tom, it's great to be with you, joining you from Santa Clara. I know you're going to be on your way out here a little bit later. And uh, I know you've addressed the bowl game situation against UAB and, and how you're tied in there. The thing I was most surprised about was that BYU dropped a spot to number 13 in the final college football playoff rankings because they had one less loss than Utah and had beaten the Utes head-to-head. -head. And I also didn't think Pittsburgh would jump BYU, but ultimately... The Utes and Panthers jumped to number 11 and number 12, respectively, BYU to number 13. What did you think about dropping a spot to number 13? Because, frankly, it bothered me. How did you feel about it? <laughs> well, Spencer, certainly I, like everyone in Cougar Nation, didn't like the fact that we dropped. We don't really have control over that. Never had, never would have. But we can start to take control of that by getting into the Big 12, which we will be in in two years. And as much as it, there's so much angst with yesterday and what happened, we have to look forward to this game in Independence Bowl against uh, UAB and have a great game and punch us forward, move us forward, give us growth, give us development, put us forward to moving into the Big 12. That's what it's all about right now. Do you feel like ultimately it would have had to be maybe undefeated to get into the New Year's Six probably? You know, I don't know. I think that maybe because of what we did last year, having such a great year and being right on the outs. And then you look at this year, if we would have had that one loss maybe to a Baylor team who was a national uh, or a uh, conference champion, that could have been made a difference. But it's woulda, coulda, shoulda. We don't really know that. But you have to go back and look at UCF. UCF was having this conversation undefeated and didn't get into that conversation about the, um, the playoff. But they weren't a New Year's Six. Cincinnati, same thing last year. It was great to see Cincinnati break into the um, playoff. And now we're going to see 
Will it change? Will it get to 12? Will it be expanded beyond four? These are the things that are happening right now that have to be exciting for BYU fans. Do you want it to 12? 12 would have hurt even more today, by the way. <laughs> um, maybe, but I think in the future, being in a conference, 12 will be better for us. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, let's... As you match up with UAB, Tom, oh, sorry, Jerem, didn't mean to cut nope. you off, but as you match up with UAB, what do, you, what do you know about the Blazers at this point in Conference USA, and, and how do you feel about the matchup overall for BYU as they try and get 11 wins on the season for back-to-back -back years? Uh, I've actually had a chance to see them. I'm kind of a little bit of a football junkie, so I've seen them play a little bit this year, and uh, they are very athletic. As everybody has started to read right now and study up on them, they will be a very good team for us to play on the road way down in Louisiana. They're not going very far. We are. Um, it'll be a challenge for us to go in there and uh, play against a really good defense that will attack us and come after us. I, they're top 15 team in the nation defensively. And they have a really good running back and a really good running game. And that's one thing that we're going to have to do is slow down that running game. Athletic Director Tom Homel is on BYU Sports Nation talking uh, football. Let's talk about Kalani for a sec. Certainly some jobs have opened up around the country. What's being done to secure his future with BYU since everything's going really well right now? Uh, we are in conversations with Kalani at this point in time, and he's our coach. We want him for a long time, and good things are going to happen in the near future. Tom, I, I want to talk about soccer, obviously, because I'm at beautiful Stevens Stadium, and we've already mentioned that you're on your way out here later today. I just can't, I can't even express the emotions that I feel for this BYU women's soccer team following that dramatic penalty kick win over Santa Clara. What do you think about the opportunity that BYU has to win their first team head-to-head -head national championship since 2004? All I know, Spencer, is I could not sleep last night. Toss and turn and rolling over and over and over thinking we're playing for the national championship tomorrow night. And just to look at this team, what Jennifer and her staff and these women have done to get to this position. You know, you look at a lot of national championships in different sports and you try to weigh and measure which ones are more difficult than others. Hey, if you're in any national championship, it's a difficult run. But women's soccer is very difficult. The ball bounces funny in many ways. That was a game last week against Santa Clara that went to PKs. It came down to the last kick of the game. And that was something that you just kind of count your lucky stars that all the breaks went well for us this year. The girls were prepared for each and every game. We slipped a little bit early, but later we were strong. And that's a good way to be. It's a good place to be, to be able to be in the national championship on a good strong run with a lot of momentum going in. It's pretty awesome because you probably have the best player in program history in Michaela Coulian, three-time first-team All-American. Jen has built such a powerhouse program. The validation of this is awesome. And to beat Santa Clara in that way, Tom, Santa Clara, the history there is rich, right? Of, It's been tough to beat them in the NCAA tournament. They won the national championship. It's a home game. You were there. You, you flew back for volleyball. You're going back tonight. You're all over the country. Um, this, this could be a very, very special night for Cougar Nation. I can't wait to step into that stadium. When, when we were approaching the stadium, we were a little bit late to the game. Not late to the game, but I would have liked to get there a little bit earlier. But you could see the lights in the distance as we walked. You could hear the band, the drums playing. You could hear the Santa Clara uh, crowd chanting. And as you walked into that stadium and saw the Cougs, and they're all black, oh my goodness, it was amazing to see BYU playing against Santa Clara in the semis. And then when they won it, and thinking we're in the national championship. I can't wait to step into that stadium tonight and watch those women go after it. BYU women's volleyball played in a national championship in 2014, got back to a Final Four in 2018, and now the women are back into another Sweet 16. We shouldn't take it for granted, but it kind of feels like you do because this is what Heather Olmstead's teams do. They just get to the Sweet 16 and beyond. What do you think about BYU's gutty performance against Utah to get to yet another Sweet 16, Tom? Ben, I'm going to tell you, Spencer, that game had me on the edge of my seat <laughs> from warm-ups until the celebration at the end when I just leaped out of my seat and just rushed onto the court. It, 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 was, it was a great game. It was a hard fought match. You had um, just so many different little points in that game that could have gone either way. And our girls were super resistant. They just kept fighting and battling and it looked like things were going to slip. But 
So many people came through with great plays. There's some individual plays in that match that will go down in the annals of volleyball history as mm, the turning point that could lead to something big this year. Yeah, looking forward to uh, you know Purdue on Friday. I know you'll be at that game as well. You're just crisscrossing all over the country, which is awesome. Um, basketball, obviously a disappointing loss to UVU, but a nice win against Missouri State. Still in the top 25. Women's hoops undefeated, beat Utah. It, I, this is an incredible run right now. I, I, I don't know that being engaged to the Big 12 like this has elevated BYU, but it feels like it has in some way. BYU's played at an even higher level right now. You know, I think there's a little bit to that for sure, Jeremy. I think that the, the momentum and the juice that everybody feels about it is exciting. And it's all about energy playing on whatever the competition is. It's about the energy that you can have. And I think as our student athletes start to, to feel it and begin to dream it and see the vision, but there's one thing else. They have prepared for this. Mm. Even before the Big 12 came, the soccer team, the cross-country teams, the basketball teams, and the volleyball teams, they were going to be good. Part of it has to do with that super senior year. We have some super seniors, and we have some um, athletes that they were made for this. This was their time. It's like the stars are, have been aligned this year, and they're ready to compete. So I think all of it put together puts Cougar Nation in a nice spot. Tom, with everything that has been discussed today and all of the ranked teams, including BYU women's soccer playing for a national title, women's volleyball in the Sweet 16, BYU football number 13 in the final college football playoff poll, men's and women's basketball rolling, they're both ranked. You have two individual national champion cross-country runners. When, when has there been a better time to be a BYU fan with the overall feel of the athletic department right now? Well, I, I don't really know. I just, I'm, I'm enjoying the moment as we go. Um, it, it seems like we won those championships in cross country and later on that night there was something else. So I keep turning the page and turning the chapters and reading this book. It's a great book. <laughs> and I just hope that this book continues. But I think that um, when 2021 closes, there's a lot ahead. And I'm just so grateful for these young men and young women who have given so much through this incredibly challenging time of 20 and 21 to be able to put us in this position. And it's like a springboard to the future. So right now, everything seems to be lined up, but Heather Olmstead, our women's volleyball coach, has a motto. It doesn't just happen. It's not luck. It comes through preparation, it comes through some good breaks. The ball bounces in different ways. We've had good health. A lot of things are working, but there's been a lot of el elbow grease and a lot of vision put into it, and all that credit goes to those players and coaches. I love that. Uh, it's kind of weird not to have a costume on for you right now. Just, it's just you right <laughs> This here. is my AD costume. <laughs> <laughs> You're uh, Mr. Rogers sweater. I like that. Yeah. Well, Tom, thanks for coming in. Safe travels out to Santa Clara today. Go Cougs. Let's make it happen.